Oh, hey YouTube, did you miss me? I'm back, had some struggles this year, so I took a break, had to take care of health first. Um, but hey, I missed doing these videos, I missed you guys. Um, I have to welcome you to the Tiga K Observatory. So here at the TKK Observatory, I keep everything covered and I also have a light shield that I'm using for whenever my neighbors turn on their lights. One of the benefits of having the TKK Observatory is that the tripod and mount do not have to move. So once I polar aligned it, I just set up my telescope, plug everything in, make sure focus is where it needs to be, begin my uh, image acquisitions. It happens really fast. now. So instead of having to haul everything out and set it all up, get balanced, get polar aligned, all that goes away. It's very simple now and I love it. All right, so here at the TKK Observatory, I've got my rig set up with tripod, of course my power supplies. From there what I do is I'll plug in, I'll absolutely, I'll plug in my Raspberry Pi. So I've got my Wi-Fi signal uh, going inside to the computers. Um, I've got a 12 volt power supply that I also plug in here and that's for the camera. And what I'm trying to do is run a single wire up to the telescope itself. I'm trying to keep as much weight off of the telescope as I can because I figure that's easier to manage in terms of balance. I've got my uh, dual axis motors working. So that's the controller for it here. And of course I've got the RA and declination motors installed up there. And then out, you know, here's the entire setup with the telescope, the uh, filter holder, the field flattener, and of course the rest of the Orion SD80 telescope. So just to summarize with, with this, it's, this is it's going to be fun for the next iterations of videos because we're really going to focus on just taking pictures, improving my post-processing skills, even improving the acquisition skills. Because that's not a lot of what I've worked on here in terms of uh, acqu the acquisition on these projects. Most of it has been, let's just get a consistent flat field with the telescope I have and make the adjustments necessary to achieve that. And I think I have, I think I've gone as far as I can go uh, without having to buy another telescope has been pretty inexpensive setup for me. So uh, I don't want anybody to expect, uh, the, you know, I think I spent somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,200 total for all of this stuff here, not including this camera. Don't expect to, to see um, prices like that in total for a telescope, telescope rig. If we're looking at this particular setup here, if we were to price this out completely from top to bottom brand new, we're talking about about 300, I'm sorry, $3,000 to duplicate what you see here at a brand new state. For that, you can do a lot better as far as quality of telescope, the type of mounts, you can actually get a go-to mount in that price range. So something to think about, right? Now, if you're just trying to get uh, into astrophotography and you don't know where to start, there's a couple ways to do that, right? You can very easily take that uh, cell phone out of your pocket, go to your local library, see if they've got telescopes, and they'll let you check one out. Um, there's certain museums that have those as well. And from there, you can actually just take that uh, cell phone you have and start taking pictures of the bright objects, right? Like the planets, uh, even the moon. Typically, that's where a lot of people start. And then from there, you're gonna spend some money. It's just a matter of how far you wanna go and how much you wanna spend. This is a lot of fun. You know what, if I can do it, um, and it fits what you're doing today, it might help you as well. So I think right now for me, just at minimum, it's really just start taking a whole lot of pictures, make, create some projects, identify some objects in the sky, sit on them for a few nights in a row if possible, or as many nights as I can, play around with the filters I have, you know, really get to understand what it takes to get a good photo. 
Um, the Iris Nebula is one that I really have targeted for a long time to try to say, okay, I'm going to make a project of that. And I think this is the time to actually go after it for the first time and see what kind of results I get from that. Um, I know it's a tough target, but I just, that, that one just draws me in. Um, and I, I really want to go after that. So th that's what to, I think to expect from me coming forward in terms of videos. Um, I've got Nina on my PC now, so I'm going to learn that. I've got PixInsight, so I'll be learning that. So out, out of all of this, um, and the things that I'm doing, I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective on now that I've got this set up to the best that I can get it, you know, what kind of quality improvements can I make on the other side of, of this besides the hardware? Well, let me close by saying thanks for watching. And remember, the sky is only the limit when your mind is unwilling to fly. So go beyond. Thank you.